I was uh, I, I looked at my topic over the weekend. I was shocked to find it was reinforcing digital communications. So I, I, I felt that, you know, uh, what do I know about reinforcing digital communication? So I thought I would take the liberty to change the topic to reinventing the telco business. Um, I'm sorry if you are here for the wrong session, but, you know, I, I, I hope this will be an interesting, and I'm sure it will be an interesting presentation. All right. Thank you, Appy. Uh, Appy is a fairly new friend. He was introduced by Benjamin an old friend from, from way back. Um, and, and when we struck the conversation about a couple of months ago, we shared the same vision. That's why we say we'll support Epi. And, and, and I'll tell you why, further down my presentation, why we want to be a global partner. Right? Now, for those of you who are from, not from Singapore, Starhub is the second largest telco in Singapore. We have a quad play. We, Singapore is a country with about 1.2 million homes, uh, 5.3 million people. We have about 2.3 million mobile customers. Uh, half a million broadband, half a million pay TV customers on both cable and also IPTV, and about 200,000 customers use our HFC network for digital voice. Our, uh, one of our key strategies is to provide a uh, bundled service, which is called hubbing. So the customers who take our TV, our broadband, and our mobile services are the ones that you know, we hold dear to, and we want to try and encourage more people to take our, our services. Singapore is a... A very small city, as you would have found, for those of you who are here in Singapore for the first time, 26 miles by 16 miles. You know, uh, within 30 seconds, you're out of the Singapore airspace. But we, have a, we really have a world-class infrastructure. If you look at um, uh, what we have, uh, Singapore is 4G, 300% coverage, because every telco has covered Singapore fully with LTE. Uh, today, we have 87% uh, of the population with smartphones, uh, probably the largest together with Hong Kong. 60% of our customers are LTE customers, so they get, on the average, about 20 megabits per second download speeds, most parts of Singapore. Right? Wi-Fi, we announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that you know, we have got a pervasive Wi-Fi infrastructure, and if you are a customer of one of the three telcos with IPSIM authentication, you can roam to any of the telcos' Wi-Fi networks. That means you don't even have to enter your username and password. And in terms of fiber, because of the government's initiative, 95% of the homes today are passed with fiber that can actually offer up to one gigabit per second connectivity on the fixed networks, right? And of course, you know, uh, you, you know very well the disruption that we are seeing. So many of the, you know, the like FPSA um, OTT players are coming into offer services and which many of our consumers are uh, enjoying. So some of the key trends that we are seeing, right? I've mentioned the rise of the OTT players. Uh, I, I'm glad that Epi reminded me. In 2006, Google uh, bought YouTube for 1.6 billion. In 2014, Facebook bought WhatsApp for I don't know how many billions. With 55, 55 employees, right, and with no revenue stream. And the guy said, "I'm not going to go for advertising as a revenue stream." You know, so we don't know. It could be the next uh, YouTube, right? So as our telco, as, as our telco ourselves, right? Do we want to buy these companies? I don't know. So. So if I don't know, then where do I find the answer? Maybe it's through the crowd, right? Um, you're very familiar with this, mobility and social uh, media, especially you know, if you're on the trains in Singapore, everybody's looking at their smartphones, whether it's watching videos, you know, WhatsApping or whatever. And today, I'm very happy to tell you that even within the MRT trains in the tunnels, you can get LTE within the tunnels itself, right? And of course, you know, increasingly, Increasingly, we're realizing that because we have a telco, we have touch points with our customers on the mobile, on the TV, on the broadband, we know a lot about customers. And from there, we are able to then be closer to the customers and also understand what they're doing, what their habits are, and what else we can sell to them. So because of this, we figure that, you know, um, market is very saturated, startups is only in Singapore. We have to figure out how we're able to grow revenue. So, Two things, right? Innovation and partnership. A telco traditionally is a dinosaur in the internet age. We move very slowly. So if we depend on ourselves to try and figure out where the innovation is, it's very difficult. And that's why now I have a team now to try and source the partnerships. And this is the reason, okay? This is the reason why we are partners with you in this globally and not only in Singapore. Because through you, hopefully we can identify new partners and new companies to invest, incubate, and also grow. Right. And with this, we actually launched two initiatives, one of which is our smart hub that runs on our analytics, and secondly is IQ. With our data, if you are a mobile customer, 
I know where you are. I know who you are calling. If you go onto internet, I know what URL you are surfing to. I know what app you are using. I know, for, as, a, as a telco, I know which, let's say, mu music streaming app, you know, between the different apps, right? If you are TV customers, of the many set-top boxes we have out there in the market, 80% are two-way set-top boxes. Every click on the remote control is captured. So we know if a customer is actually watching live program over the cable network, or whether he's watching a content that's on his hard disk. At the same time, if he streams over YouTube, we're able to look at it from mobile networks as well as our broadband networks. So we know a lot of our customers. And it is this knowledge that we, we told the government, is that, okay, we're going to go out there and engage the crowds. We're going to put a subset of our data in a test bit to allow people to come and use the data. And from the data itself, let's try and find out insights about what the data can provide you. Let me give you some examples. I'll have four use cases, one of which is this, right? Now, if you are a customer of ours and you go to a shopping mall like Plaza Singapura, I know you are there and how long you are there based on the location. Because you are a customer from a CRM, I know where you stay. So from here, we understand that you know, uh, over a course of two weeks period, right, 15% of the customers actually visited both Plaza Singapura and Nix, which are mall is in the suburban area. And we narrow it down, right? What about those that live along a certain train track, which is Northeast Line? Those who live along the Northeast Line, 26% have visited these two malls. So for us, it's a marketing insight. So we go and tell Plaza Singapore is that you know, if you want to compete with these other suburban malls, have more marketing campaigns along the train stations, more ads, for example, and look out for this guy who is going to capture your customer base. One example. Second example is that you know, based on the customers who come into Singapore, if they roam around network, thank you very much, um, we know where they come from. And from there, we can see, okay, based on the visitors who come to Singapore, where do they go to along Orchard Road, which is our main shopping belt? And the bigger the ball is, the, 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 the larger the number of people. And from there, we also can determine which nationality they are. And we ask ourselves, right, where do the Chinese tourists go to? And it, this shows the, the, the bubbles, and then this is where they go between and so on. The biggest, the biggest bubble is the DFS duty-free store along Scott's Road. The shopping, right? So we ask ourselves, where are the Brits, right? Well. The Brits are somewhere in Tangling Mall, so this is where the, the high com is, and this is probably where the pubs are, right? So this is some examples. The example is in terms of TV viewership. We know at what time age groups between 35 and 45 are watching what programs. And also whether they're watching it on cable, on the tablet, or on a mobile phone. Advertising opportunities are tremendous, right? And last but not least, you know, the train has always been a bugbear in Singapore. So we are telling the authorities, based on the number of minutes the guy sits or stands in the platform, I can tell you how many trains he has missed. And this will help you actually optimize, optimize your train schedules. So this is one part of our outreach. I put data on the table and say, please come and use the data and create new insights. And if it's a win-win situation, we revenue share. Okay. Another part of it is that we've actually formed this unit called iCube, which is Innovate, Invest, and Incubate. Stephen, can you please stand up? Stephen mm -hmm. is our guy who runs iCube. And the idea is, is, is what I've mentioned, right? How, how are we able to then reach out, reach out to the companies with the bright ideas mm -hmm. who can actually benefit our business in the traditional sense and also new business? So the idea of Stephen, I told him, is very clear. Your, your target is very simple. Within the next three to five years, I want to see his team grow startup revenue by 10% within the next three to five years. So he knows that you know, uh, that's his target, right? So the idea is how do we engage companies to actually come and, and help us build new businesses, okay? So one of the things he has done is this, right? We call it a smart foundry. We understand, like I said, you know, telcos are dinosaurs. We really don't know how to do things which are as fast as the internet companies. So what do we do? We actually open our networks to developers. So last year, we actually had an event where we say, okay, we're going to publish APIs that allow our developers to develop applications that run onto our voice network and our SMS networks. All right? And with those APIs, they can actually mesh up with whatever they do and create new applications. One of the applications was quite interesting. So let's say for a bank, right? as you talk to your bank, private banking customers, it is recorded at the same time. So that every, every 
conversation is captured. If there are any questions about, you know, is disputes and whatever, it's all stored in there. So I think with this, we, we have been able to engage a, a group of developers who traditionally don't work with us. Traditional telcos never do this, right? Because we, we always want to do our thing ourselves. But now we are saying that, hey, you know, this can't, this can't be weird. That's why we are saying it's about reinventing the telco space, okay? So we want to engage with customers. We want to engage with developers and follow the Apple, get a pool of developers to help us to say, okay, create new businesses. And if it's a win-win, revenue share, if it's you do well, I take stick in you, and then I'll bring you out into the world. Okay, so that's that's about smart foundry. So last year, as I said, we actually had a, a hackathon, and and we we identified some applications, and we are looking to see whether we want to invest in in these companies. So today, with Smart Hub, with iCube, we are ready to announce our next platform. Okay, this is called Cultivate. I will now show you a video of what Crowdtivate is. Can Got an audio? idea? An idea you would like to share with the world? But then you'd need a great idea. And those don't grow by themselves. They need funding, R&D, and customers. So welcome to Crowdtivate. Crowdtivate is your doorway to a world of believing customers, to a wealth of crowdsourced funds, and feedback to help you fine-tune your grand idea. At Crowntivate, we give you the platform. We give you the drawing board. We give you the tech infrastructure you'll need. And we'll even give you access to mentors with tremendous experience in marketing, sales, and business development. Furthermore, with our partnerships across Asia, you can blast off to the region whenever you're ready. So sign up with Crowntivate today and let your technological dreams take flight. So, as you can see, it's not only a, a crowdfunding, a crowdsourcing, a crowd voting platform, but there's also an incubation uh, platform behind it. Like I said earlier, right? I mean, and Stelcos, we are dinosaurs, really can't, can't determine you know, which are the new ideas. We, we won't know whether WhatsApp will make it. And we, of course, we don't have the deep pockets like Facebook to go and throw billions of dollars on WhatsApp. But the idea is that if we have a platform that will encourage people to put their ideas on, if enough people vote on the idea, then likely the idea probably can you know, be profitable for us. And that's where we go in there and help them incubate them, bring them out into the world, you know, and put some money in them. That, that's the idea about Crowdtivate, right? So let me, let me just uh, uh, go into the details, right? I mean, behind that crowdsourcing uh, funding platform, there's an incubation. We want to be able to help these guys uh, uh, grow, provide them with very basic stuff like office and, and whatsoever. We also want to provide mentorship. Uh, as a telcos, we have many, many partners, whether it's ourselves, our vendors, and whatever. We can, we, we're very confident that we can probably help these guys you know, understand their business model. They have the ideas, but maybe the business models, the network, the relationships, we can bring it to them. We are now talking to like-minded regional telcos. Every telco is the same. You, know, we, you talk to the lights of, of KPN, you talk to the lights of you know, um, Telstra, True or whoever, every telco is facing the same challenges that their bread and butter is being eaten by the OTT guys. So we are all coming together and say, okay, let's come together, let's come together and then create some kind of a network that if there are good ideas, I can actually spawn it in multiple cities concurrently so that these guys can grow faster. And last but not least, if, if the guy actually gets good um, traction and sufficient people, and then we just put some money in them and then help them market and then bring them out. So, so it's a very simple formula. Uh, we, are, we are focusing on three main areas. The first area is because Starhub is not only a telco, but also a media company. We want to try and support those who are also creating content, whether it's books, short films, music, you know, and, and whatever. Because as our PTV operator, we figure that in the future, it's not going to be about TV content, video content, but all kinds of entertainment content. Right? The second area is in terms of, so Zig Zig is one example where you know, this guy said, I've got a T-shirt, you know, if you have different attachables, I can change the look of the T-shirt. The second one is easily about, you know, technologies that largely in the Infocom space, right, um, which many of you are doing. So one example is that this, this device not only is a 3D printer, but also a 3D scanner. The third one is uh, uh, in the area of assistive technologies. You know, cities around the world are facing the challenges of aging population. Um, we are facing um, um, increasingly, because 
parents are having children at a later age, all kinds of problems, whether it's autism and so on. So we want to figure out other technologies that help these, this um, aging population and also kids uh, live a better life. So these are the three areas that we're looking at. And this is an example of a pen that helps a, a child learn how to hold the pen to write. So these are the three areas. And, and if you have some ideas or, or, or partnership uh, interests, please talk to us. Right? So it's currently, I'm very happy to say that we're working with Crowdonomics uh, to actually run this program. But there are also other partners, like HomeFix, uh, which is a DIY store in Singapore. They are now looking at the new strategy as well, SITF, Nanyang Poly, and you can, you can see the likes of it. So I'm, I'm sure after this event, many of you will come forward. I'm, I'm very pleased to engage. And for us, it's very simple. The, the success of Star Hub is how well we partner you. We, we know for a fact that if we try and buy you and integrate the smaller companies into our, our startup, uh, the, likely the entrepreneur will run away and it will kill the idea. So it's about partnership. We don't want to own a lot of in your company, but through the partnership, we want to try and leverage our network, our subscriber base, our marketing touch points to help you go quicker. Okay? So, crowdivate.com. Please uh, uh, engage my team uh, if you're interested. Thank you very much. You mentioned about the technology uh, on, a, on a more like a better living, and this is one part of that we're, we're also focusing also on the healthcare that we want to bring this in. Uh, the role in a, a telecom in healthcare, I think it's really um, important. Uh, open up some of the data, and we're going to talk more about that. How do you, how do you see in that technology? No, I, I think you know, I'm, I'm very, very excited about healthcare uh, because you know, we have a set top box in every home. Most of our people at home actually carry one of these devices, right? Bluetooth connection to any sensors in the body, you know, display the stuff on the, on the set-top box, right? Mm -hmm. And any emergency, just press a button, then you can get at least video conferencing or whatever. We, we have the ecosystem to uh, help some of you guys to actually deliver applications and services to reach out into the homes. Yeah. So very, very happy to talk about it. Right? Great.